Conversation with the big guy Ryback. I am the big guy Ryback, and today joined my my good friend, big time actor Stu Bennett, is uh, made time for the podcast here in his busy uh, schedule that he is going on. He's doing a lot of um, a lot of promo work here for his new film, I Am Vengeance Retaliation. John Gold is back once again. Spe- special, special, <laughs> special forces soldier John Gold, and uh, this is uh, this is a fun one. It's uh, not as long as we usually go on this with his schedule. He had like thirty something interviews here, and uh, he was able to squeeze us in for about twenty minutes and uh, twenty twenty five minutes, about thirty when he with the technical issues prior. We tried to do Streamyard, and uh, there were some sound issues on that, unfortunately. So we went with the old Skype, back to the the uh, original format with this for YouTube, anyways. But the audio was much better on that. Um, which is something I'm going to have to decide because Skype audio, I feel like, is superior to that StreamYard, <clears throat> depending on, on what the person's speaking on. Uh, but we're going to talk the film today and uh, kind of just catch up a little bit with what's going on with Stu and everything. We're going to talk a little bit about NWA and also uh, the, the rumors of the Nexus reunion uh, and, and that whole situation. Ladies and gentlemen, Stu Bennett. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. What? Oh, this is this is, <laughs> this is still shit. This is I'm so sitting bad. here laughing and just trying to. I call, doesn't answer. It says you're calling. I pick up and hangs up on me. I pick up a second time and hangs up on me. <laughs> I don't know why. Like for some reason, again, my mic won't work on this. I don't know why it's not. Gonna, I've been using Zoom for the past three or four days, and it's worked on every call. I don't know why this one isn't picking up. I don't even know how I changed the setting for it. Like, the the good news is the audio is really good though. Is the audio working? So if I just take all this shit off, this works. You're really better nice. like that. Now I can see you whole screen because I have the TV for the YouTube. That way you'll be able to be seen better the way you are right now. All right, cool. So if, if the audio is good enough for you, then we'll just go like this. This fucking piece of shit mic that I bought. Has been I thought you were standing up against the wall for a second, like a mugshot, like fucking. <laughs> That's why I, I did one of these a couple of weeks ago, and someone thought I was being held hostage against the wall, <laughs> chained to a radiator. The most uncomfortable. I, I found the one person in my one place in my house that's actually pretty quiet, and then I'm gonna like books and an unmade bed in the background. I just use the wall. People will judge me whatever they see in the background. It's like, oh, it's the empty beer can. Big time actor me, Stu Bennett doesn't make his bed. <laughs> to to tear him on it, tequila bottles empty in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there we go. What a world, man. How long? I don't want to keep you. The, spent 15 minutes of my time I had with you trying to get you figured out with the stream. Oh, yard. shit. Time's up. Next call, <laughs> Sonic. Thank you. Thank All you. right, guys. Thanks for check out. Check out uh, I Am Vengeance Retaliation. John Gold's back once again. <laughs> Round three next time. <laughs> Couple of bozos. You, how many interviews Rock do you have? Brain. This is. At least you can you can be com, can just enjoy yourself on this one, but uh, yeah, exactly. you're doing what do you have like a hundred different uh, interviews for this? Yeah, I think in total this week it's been about thirty interviews, so uh, it's it's all been very much uh, a lot of the same questions and stuff like that, and like uh, on my best behavior and making sure I don't say the wrong thing. You say the wrong thing, it's misinterpreted, yeah. and that's the problem with this interview because I'm like, oh, it's just a chat with my mate Skip. Like, That's the whole point is I lure people in with the conversation. That, hey, it's just me and you. We're having a good, fun, friendly conversation. Oh, yeah, it's all being recorded also. And there's probably going to be 20 things that – oh, don't worry. We've already – I always – there'll be something with me, 99% positive, and there'll be one thing that they'll be able to take and they'll get it. <laughs> that's that's the, 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 the joys of doing uh, podcasting or whatever. But you're in a much more – you have to be very professional with everything you do with this. This is promoting the movie, and uh, I got to ask you, John Golden, this one. I'm a big. I saw the first one. I bought it. I'm a friend. I'm not. Thank you. And as you bought the supplements, it always means a lot. Than the people that try to get stuff. Still, still, still use my shaker to this day. Hell of a, a shaker. Of compliments on it. It's a great shaker. I will. Say I don't use the supplements, but I love your shaker bottle. <laughs> <laughs> what? Would, what do we do this? 
this is about the shake about. Oh no, it's my film. That's what was supposed. Yes, to be. yes, yes. Talk <laughs> to me about this because the first one, John Gold, you, you did a lot of ass kicking in the first one. That was my. I'm very. I was very. This is this movie's right down my my alley here. My only gripe was with was John Gold. I was. I had a hard time suspending my belief watching my friend the whole time. I mean, you're a, you're a pretty serious ass kicker in this. Is this what's happening in, in round two, essentially? Yeah, so uh, the good thing about the first one, we shot that in 2016. That was right after I left WWE. And by the time it came out, it was edited and promoted. It was two years later in 2018. And thankfully, it was supported very well by kind people like yourself. And it actually made some money. Um, and because of that, because it was, it was pretty popular globally, um, we got a budget for the second one, which was bigger, and that's uh, part of this second one is, is hopefully, I think, bigger and better than the first one. It's more in the genre of kind of the 80s action classics, which knowing Ryback or Skip Sheffield, I know you're a big fan of your yeah, Stallones and your yes. um, Schwarzeneggers and all that stuff from back then, and this is very much in that realm because the director, Ross Bias, who also wrote it, he loves those kind of movies. I grew up on those before I was even a fan of professional wrestling when i was 10 or 11 years old i was already watching arnold schwarzenegger films and wanted to be big and muscular and strong like him so this is in that realm of just a 90 minute sprint of pure action and uh an ode to that genre i love it you i gotta say you're probably my favorite actor and thank you very it, much i and it, it's I, in that class of like the Stallones and the Arnolds, but with you, it's more of the the whiskey and the cigars. You're the you're <laughs> you're, you're your own style of ass kicker. It's yeah, <laughs> L.A. Fitness early in the morning, and then the, the cigars and whiskey later on at night, which I I can relate to and I appreciate. I feel that was the Jesse the Body Ventura approach, dude. If you watch him in Predator, it's probably my all-time favorite acting role. Uh, I think he's brilliant. So if I'm in that realm for you, fantastic. I think there's more money in that, too, because you're more relatable. People don't want to see a guy with, with a six-pack, even though you, you, you're in great shape. And I, I joke <laughs> about this. But I always joked with Cody about that. I go, I go you got to have a cheeseburger and a beer to let people know you're one of them. You can't just you can't be drinking your protein shakes on TV all the time. So, in this, so does John Gold? Is there? I don't want any spoilers with this, but I, I take it John Gold kicks a lot of ass in this one. And it is is uh, is there is there talk of, of a third one, or do you guys got to wait and see? Yeah. So the difference between the first one and the second one, the second one because it had a bigger budget, we're actually able to expand the cast, and it's not just me kicking ass in this one. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of people, and obviously. For a large part of the film, I get my ass kicked too. So there's actually a fight scene with a uh, my first time in the entire world of pro wrestling or film. I have a fight scene with a female, which going into it, I was really nervous. Uh, she's like half my size and uh, very good looking girl. And I was like, wow, I don't want to hurt this girl. How is this even going to look with me fighting with someone who's half my size? But uh, she was so tough and such an ass kicker. And uh, she's got these brilliant kind of ninja style moves. Her name is Katrina Durden. Yeah. She's done quite a bit already in the world of film and uh, she's fantastic so stuff like that working with people like her and fighting with Vinnie Jones which is another one that's you know I can't believe I'm even saying that I'm in a film with Vinnie Jones and doing fight scenes yeah. with him um, there's a lot of just ass kicking and fighting and all the way through that's what the film is about it's about but I think there's actually 19 fights in this film and then there's a bunch of you know weaponry armory and um, car chases explosions people getting thrown out of buildings and stuff like that remember it's an indie film we are not playing with a uh, a rock 200 million budget uh, so there's a certain level of let's call it grittiness to the film um, and it's us punching above our weight and trying to achieve more than uh, we perhaps have right to um, but that's part and parcel of what it is it's kind of like if you enjoy the world of wwe and think that's fantastic but sometimes you look at something that's perhaps a lower budget that's you know an indie show or something like that it's kind of it gives you a different glance into the world of filmmaking so that's what we're working with and i'm uh, very proud of what we achieved and I, you, I do. I think you, you, you've skipped over this. The, the, I was a big fan of the first one. John Gold. He likes his cigars. He likes his alcohol. But he also likes his women. And says the Latina back in this is. <laughs> <laughs> is it, and I can't remember because it's been so long since I saw it. But that's is, is you're talking about all these fight scenes. Wet. We're frozen. Well, the, you're, you're right. 
there's a, there's a lot of parallels between Stu Bennett and John Gold, absolutely, and you've pointed a few of them out. <laughs> Unfortunately, the uh, the lady you're referencing wasn't back for the the second ah. one. We do have we do have a great cast, uh, but I will say this: I, in all honesty, uh, the director, the writer Ross Boyask, after we finished the first one and uh, it got released and was getting very good feedback, uh, he jokingly texted me and said, "Oh, hey." I'm, uh, I should start working on a script for the next one now, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. In fact, I've got a, uh, I've got a title for you. John Gold goes to the strippers. <laughs> that was my, that was my little joke to him. He's like, ah. <laughs> Fast forward twelve months, he's now written the script. The opening scene is me walking into a strip club. So wow. uh, I like to think I had that little. Uh, <laughs> little uh, way of influencing the script. So he's already asked me, "What do you want for the next one?" I say, "Oh, you know, uh, John Gold goes to a, uh, a desert island beach with a bar and bikini babes, or something like that." So. <laughs> Make the next pitch for a husky doorman that's in the movie for five seconds that you blow off, and it's me, and I got to gain like thirty pounds of fat and be a little like out of shape, and it's just you big leaguing me as going into one of the strip clubs. <laughs> and, as I, and as I walk in, you're pounding a feeding more nutrition shaker. <laughs> <laughs> so what where, where uh when is, is this out now when is this out and where could people watch this so i'm not sure when you're releasing this but it will the u.s release of the movie um is on friday the 19th of june which is we're recording this on thursday so it's tomorrow i don't know if yeah you're out this will be out next week so i'll promote that then. okay so, yeah. so by the time anyone sees this it is out in the u.s already it's on all major vod platforms um in the uk i know you have a lot of Fans in the UK, big fans of the corn fed meat edge skip Sheffield over in the UK. Um, it's out in the UK on July 13th, and the rest of the world is is around that point too, around July 13th. So right. US gets it first. Is this now like available like on iTunes? Because I think that's where I got it last time. Was it on i, I it's available in multiple outlets, right? Yeah, that's right. So all the major VOD platforms, uh, <laughs> that's where you'll get it. So go to like iTunes, go to Amazon Prime. In yeah. fact, I've got a list here. They sent me a list of where you can get it. So to give the exact... Uh, People, that's why I was at. Because I, I remember I got it on iTunes before. Right. So in the US, it just says all major digital platforms and okay. on DVD through Saban Films and Lionsgate. In the UK, it's going to be on Sky Store, Amazon, iTunes, Virgin Store, Microsoft, and Google Play. So all the big places you get in your movies, that's where it is. I will say, if you're in the US, the first one, just called I Am Vengeance, is on Netflix right now. So you can go watch that for free on Netflix if you have it. Um, eventually, this one might end up there too at some point i don't know but uh, that's just in the u.s the rest of the world on you don't get it on netflix so it's all different regional deals yeah. that they sign and uh, i'm not really involved in that good deal was this your third movie also now or have you done more than that now it's actually my fifth movie so um i did the first one in 2012 called dead man down yeah uh, i did a very small role in that one uh, and then since then i've done four more uh, and I've been lead roles in all four. So uh, even though I have quite a short movie career, I've actually had some pretty big parts and good reps and stuff like that. And I always feel that that's the best thing you have to, to improve as a performer and an actor is the more reps you get, as you know from the rest of the world, the, the better you're going to end up. So. so let me ask you, that with, with you with, with acting and, and stuff, because we both left wrestling and had our different reasons for everything, which is similar too, I think, in, in one regard. But uh, are you? I, I know you. You've always been an entertainer and, and, and very, very good at speaking. Skippy had was had a brains for rock, so he would rely on his physical ability a little more early on. And uh, you know, for every you know ten books Skippy reads, it's like Stu reading one book. So <laughs> so he has to work a little harder on that end. What is, is this day like with with where you're at right now? Is um is wrestling on the radar? I know you're doing stuff with NWA commentating, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, so I love pro wrestling. You and I both to this day discuss pro wrestling. We're, we're still friends. And yeah. I think for both of us, whatever we do in the world, our first love will always be pro wrestling. I think we both walked away from wrestling in 2016 with a lot of anger in our souls. Yeah. Um, but over time, that tends to dissipate. And the cool thing is you start to get experiences with other companies and other forms of pro wrestling where whatever passion that was burned out it kind of regrows and i did some stuff in the uk with a company called defiance i did some stuff in the uk with wos wrestling and that really got my appetite back and then i was very fortunate to get a call from david lagana and billy corgan at nwa at the end of last year looking to get me involved in uh, commentary and i have quite the history of commentary if you go back even fcw you remember i was working with dusty Rhodes and byron saxton i was the commentator of the show down there and i always loved that that was before 
the world had even heard of who Wade Barrett was or any NXT season one. So to get to go back and do more of that is fantastic. And uh, I just know there's always going to be opportunities in the world of pro wrestling. Um, and I love the fact that I can always kind of choose the ones that are right for me, that I'm going to enjoy, that the schedule works for me, yeah. that the the style of the company. And I'll, I'll just give a little pitch about NWA for anyone who hasn't seen them before. Um, I grew up obviously in the 80s and 90s, and I feel like professional wrestling back then was all about characters and storylines and promos and it had some wrestling too and that was a part of it i feel in my opinion where wrestling has gone wrong over the last few years it has become almost 99 percent about purely the action going on in the ring with the at the expense of the character work and the promos and the craziness of it and the storylines and i always feel that's neglected these days in NWA, that is the biggest differentiator between them and any other company out there. Is It's all about storylines. Yeah. It's about characters. It's about performance. They have great wrestling, too, but there's more a, fo a focus on the storytelling. Which uh, So I love it. I think it's great. I encourage anyone to check it out. All the episodes are on YouTube at the moment. They're all free to go check out NWA Power. Um, we're not filming anything at the moment because of the COVID-19 and the the shutdown and hopefully that gets cleared up at some point in the future and we can get back to making more programming. Absolutely. And a guy right there, uh, Ricky Starks actually just debuted for AEW against Cody Rhodes last night. Ricky actually was an extra with me in Laredo, Texas, uh, where I ended up slapping tuna fish in his face and I uh, got in his ear. But I remember he was a great guy and I ended up running into him years ago at the LVAC gym down the road. And I was like, what are you doing here? I don't know. He was in town for something, but we had a conversation and, and it was just talking about like conditioning and burpees and things on how that helped me and anyways though he last night i noticed during his match something with him is and i think this is with nwa and, and two people is registering selling yep. is something that is glossed over for more action sometimes and he did a top rope superplex with cody and laid on the mat selling it afterwards and didn't just like hop up and cover him and i go he gets it like it was and i think that's like that nwa has that old school where it's the action is still there. It's just you also do all the other things that make wrestling great. I think so. Yeah, it's, it's not throwing away things stupidly. It's not throwing yeah. away finishes. It's not throwing away ridiculous landings and then getting up and doing the, doing more moves. It's um, everything make, means something. I'm a big fan of Ricky Starks. I was lucky enough to commentate on some of his matches in NWA. He had a tremendous match with uh, Nick Aldis a few weeks before we shut everything down. And he's he's just a great talent. And that's one of the cool things about. NWA is it gives uh, young talents an opportunity to put themselves in the shop window, uh, show what they can do, develop their skills, get some reps from some really experienced guys, and hopefully develop personas and characters. And it was pretty obvious early on that Ricky Starks, in some yeah. capacity, was going to be a, a big name or a big star going forward because you could just see the talent that he had. And he's got a great look, great movement. But you're right, the biggest thing I'm a fan of with Ricky Starks was his selling. I think yeah. he's, I think he's going to be a, a really great kind of white meat baby face as we call it that he just you get he, he endears you to him with his selling and that sympathy and that's something again it's a lost art because people people want to jump up immediately and start hitting cool moves and flips and this this that and the other and that is without wanting to sound like too much of an old man it was better in my day that is absolutely a, a lost uh, part of pro wrestling in these days and it's been like that way for for some time certainly when i was involved too yeah. the last few years that i was in wwe was consistently moving that way and it's it's something i'm not a fan of and it's great seeing a guy like ricky starks who understands that and is able to pull in some of that old bret hart style of selling yeah. Shawn michael style of selling who, who let's face it they're two of the best of all time and if you're going to steal stuff steal it from those guys I agree. And I do. I know you're, you got a lot of interviews today, but I wanted to get to uh, the. I had heard the rumors of going around that there was uh, rumors of a Nexus reunion at WrestleMania, and that the reason you turned it down was because your right hand man, Skip Sheffield, was not included on the deal, which just, and, and millions of dollars were thrown at you to bring in the Nexus, but with everybody included except for Skip Sheffield slash Ryback, which you said, nope, not fucking doing it. Any, is there any truth to that rumor? That's definitely not the case at all. I was, I was completely down for doing it without Skip Sheffield. Let me be clear. I love, I love the way you heard the rumors online. I may have just started it. I may have started it. <laughs> but no, I mean, you're right. I think Darren put it out on his podcast that he'd had a call and uh, he was planning to do something. I did get a call. I wasn't really going to speak about it, but I've been asked enough times. I, I got a call about something. 
Um, and I've, I've said this already, it wasn't a good offer, it wasn't a good idea. And for me uh, to go back to do something like that was uh, a non-starter and I, I shut it down very quickly. And um, something else came out today. I was, I was asked a question on an interview yesterday about... Uh, my, my interest in returning to WWE or any other wrestling company. And I answered it honestly. It's like I'm, I'm an open book. If people want to contact me with ideas like they did, I will listen to it. And if it makes sense for me, if it's a good idea, if it's something I will enjoy, then maybe I'll do it. Yeah. But uh, if it's something that I don't want to do, then it's going to be a no. And I'm in a fortunate position, as you are, that you yeah. get to turn things down unless they work. And uh, it's something that as young men... We didn't have, and we had to say yes to everything, and that's yeah. one of the be- one of the beauties of, of walking away and, and doing other things and having other other options, and hopefully having invested our money that we made in, in WWE is it gives you a little freedom to knock back things that don't make sense, and uh, that's that's one of the fortunate things I have in life, and it's always something that whenever I'm angry about anything that happened in the past, I always have to balance it with that perspective and realize how fortunate we really are to have the good things we have. So I agree. I did, I did not get a call, and I don't think I will be, the, uh, with my trademark deal coming up in August, which I had, to send, <laughs> I had to send our little boy Mark Carano a message. I need you guys to respond to the attorney, because uh, if I have to go through with it, it's going to cost upwards of $200,000, um, which I might not even need to do it. We can, there's ways around it well, from everything. I've been, I'm getting all the details as we, the next month before we go through with everything. But, yeah, that was a... Uh, I was not going to be included in that. I would, I would imagine. So, well, that, that's your bargaining chip right there. Yeah, when they do call, that's your bargaining chip. Hey, <laughs> let me put this on the table. Oh man! So, with health wise, uh, to wrap up here with you, are you uh, wrestling wise? If the right offer comes in, and you know something like AEW, that has to be appealing to you. I would, because to me, I'm very honest. AEW is the most appealing because it's one day a week and it's a different environment, and I think they're more open minded to the times. And uh, treating wrestlers a little bit better in our generation, how we kind of came up. I think like you brought up a good point of kind of letting go of that anger and going to new places and not bringing that anger with you as well uh, to a new environment because you don't need to or anything like that. Is somewhere like that, if the AEW came to you, that they were interested in you as a performer once again, or, or do you feel like you have a good run in you still? Yeah, I, I absolutely do. I will make this clear right now because I don't want anything to be misinterpreted. Yeah. I'm not looking to get back in the ring next okay. week or a month's time. At some point in the future, I know 100% I need to go back and rewrite an ending at least. Yes. You know, I can't, I can't leave it forever on how things ended with me because it was a very a very bad time and a, a lot of disappointments of course but um, i want to float i don't want to float it out that yeah give me a call i'm looking to get back in the ring first yeah yeah call them in. that's not where i'm at at all i'm quite happy um on with the lifestyle i have right now and of course with the virus and all that stuff going around it's another reason why i don't want to be traveling at the moment yeah. and i love working with nwa and that's something that uh, whatever else I do outside of that, I hope to continue working with them and doing commentary with them, and because uh, I love doing that, and they have a great schedule yeah. and they have a great product I enjoy. So uh, yeah, at some point, if AEW had an idea, I'd of course be open to it. Same with Ring of Honor or New Japan or whatever it was, but uh, I can't see anything uh, for the rest of this year, for the rest of 2020. I would be very surprised if I was in a wrestling ring in a pair of boots. Put it that way. Yeah. No, I think it's enjoy. I, I'm very. Having no stress either is a very good thing uh, uh, in sleeping in our own beds. And, uh, yeah, I definitely – I look forward personally. I think either – I think old Stu Bennett has, has a, a hell of a lot more still, as I feel for myself too eventually when, when the time is right. But I Am Vengeance Retaliation. It's out now wherever all videos are sold, video on demand. Anything else, uh, Instagram, anything you want to plug? No, that's it. My Twitter is at Stu Bennett. My Instagram is at Stu Bennett Official. If you look on there – There's going to be a ton of information about uh, both NWA, if you're interested in checking that out, and also I Am Vengeance Retaliation. There's a bunch of trailers and interviews and things like that. Um, And, of course, I I tend to check that a couple of times a day, and sometimes I'll respond to questions and things like that on there. So check me out there. Please check out the film. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think about it if you do check it out. And, of course, check out NWA. And, uh, Ryback, thank you for having me on the show. It's always a pleasure. I keep up to date, as you know, with what's going on on all your stuff, and uh, it's always good to to check in with you and have a chat and uh, hopefully at some point I'll make it over to Vegas uh, pretty soon we'll have a have a little night out have a, have a, have some uh, some some Terramata tequila and maybe a night at the strip club <laughs> all right buddy great talking as always and guys we'll be right back after these messages
we are back. Big thank you for Stu. You guys, check out I Am Vengeance Retaliation, available on all video on demand outlets, iTunes, Amazon, uh, and anywhere else that videos are sold. Uh, the original I Am Vengeance, or the original Vengeance, I Am Vengeance, is available on Netflix now. So if you are a subscriber to Netflix, you could check that out for free and uh, see if it's something you, you enjoy. And if so, you can check out the second one. I am Vengeance Retaliation. I'm very happy for Stu and knowing uh, everything that he walked away with uh, right before me. And uh, in knowing, uh, just knowing that he's one of the few guys I've kept in very, very close contact with, I feel like um, he's one of the really, really good ones. So if you can support his film, please, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a good one. Because it's the first, I, I truly enjoyed the first one. And maybe I'm a little bit biased with it and whatnot. So, but check it out. With that, guys, I want to go ahead and we'll go ahead and do our review of the week. This week's review, we have a few new ones in. Uh, looking... There was, I'm going to acknowledge one other uh, thing of a thing because it brought up a good point. But this week's review is Ladiv Obara and Big Guy, Big Traps, Big Neck, Big Checks. In fact, from one of my Ryback phrases uh, in wrestling, WWE. And uh, the review is a five-star review this week. She goes, love the show, which consistently puts out great interviews every single week ryback saved myself and my cousin's life during this national emergency by going out of his way to provide solid formula uh, for both of us to strengthen and improve our immune systems he did this out of the kindness of his heart and made no money off of it we have since purchased his kick out immune support from feed me more nutrition as our way of showing appreciation to the goat feeling healthy and protected because of the big guy also rajback and more kevin nash at disco inferno try to get conan dolph cody and scott hall Thanks, Ryback. You're the man. And coming from two essential frontline workers, we want you to know that your products and your podcast have become essential to us. Feed me more. Thank you very much, Ladivo Barra. That, that is as sweet of an, uh, a review as uh, I think we've had. Uh, I've had. So thank you very much for that. And um, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. The you uh, just please send an email to the big guy at feedmemore.com with a screenshot, and you can have your choice of copy of my book, Wake Up, It's Feeding Time, signed by me, or uh, Feed Me More Nutrition Premium Tank Top Small Through 2XL. Just send a screenshot of your review to the big guy at feedmemore.com. And thank you guys for all the great reviews. Also, there was uh, an issue uh, with on the, on the Shooting Blanks Wrestling Report with Raj, and it only happened, I believe, during one of the segments. And I'm not sure why... Uh, and I think I have a feeling on what I what it could have been, uh, but it sounded Raj. I guess his coffee. You could hear the slurping. Uh, and it also, it sounds like during this clip that it sounds like somebody is jerking off. <laughs> While me and Raj are talking wrestling, <laughs> and I don't know why. I, and I, because I saw some comments, and I go, "What?" And like usually, I saw one, and I thought nothing of it, because you'll just sometimes someone will just say something random, and there's no. And then I saw like several of like, like what's who's jerking off or something. And I, I go, "What the fuck is going on?" So I go and listen to various points of it, and I finally get to the part. I hear Raj slurping his coffee, and then like there's just this rustling noise going on while we're talking wrestling. And uh, I don't know. I have no uh, other than what happened was last when me and R Raj recorded on StreamYard. I forgot to hit the record button on that. I record on my other. I have another camera I record on. I have my podcast the audio that we record on. And all of this is synced up. And I forgot to hit the rec uh, record now on StreamYard up until like 20, 23, 24 minutes into the recording. So the only thing I could think of is I initially something happened. The sound got thrown off with something on that end. Because it wasn't 
I don't believe it was on any other part of the show. And that may have been the first part we started talking that it, it, it recorded on in the audio and it transferred over. This stuff is so delicate. And sometimes while you're doing it, there's no way because everything sounded, that noise, I, that didn't exist while we recorded. There wasn't, it was all the same from beginning to end with me, so. I apologize sometimes uh, with the audio, and that's it's happened since we started using StreamYard. I may just go back to doing the Skype interviews, guys, uh, because Skype has really, really good audio. And yet why initially I did it is because it was reliable that no matter what, whenever anybody's using Skype, it just the sound is good. That because that way for the podcast, no matter what, the audio is going to be good. And uh, although sometimes on the video, it depends on how they record on their end, how well they come off on the TV with that. So, you know, and I'll constantly look and evaluate things and see. I do like the face to face interviews uh, that with that, with that. I think that is, I, I do like the way that's pre presented, but uh, big news, guys, uh, with everything. Also, the uh with what we're doing on YouTube here. So in working with, with the company I'm working with, and it's cause some stuff has happened. So what we're doing is it's uh, with the channel, we're trying to maximize everything here. And YouTube is a, is a very tricky animal. And I got now professionals looking at analytics and seeing what's going on. So the channel initially, when we started this about 10 months ago, was just the podcast. And the, and, the, and the clips, mostly just the podcast. And then I started doing the food videos and started doing other content. And that started really, really getting a lot of uh, traction on the channel. Well, YouTube, and again, I looked at it and I did not understanding the platform that putting a wide variety of content I thought was a good thing to give more options to hit. And I talked about it on here before to reach my audience to different things. The problem with it is, is so YouTube gathers this, and this is just information being passed along to me. YouTube ga gathers this data over a period of time. And then I got like my podcast and my podcast clips. I got wrestling. I got conversation, the conversation podcast. Then I got feeding time videos and I got Ryback has heat videos. And then we got whining with the Ryback videos, fan mail videos, ASMR videos, and any other type of video. I got Feed Me More Nutrition Live videos on there. So what happens is, is people that like subscribe to the channel because they just like watching the food or the heat challenges, they don't then, over time, they don't click on all the other videos being offered. So then YouTube stops showing your videos altogether to people or because it, 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 it's not specific enough because what they do is they show People that watch like food videos will see other food videos on their homepage. So essentially from what I was, what was explained to me is my videos are no longer being shown on people's homepage. And it's, that's why even those subscribers have gone up consistently for 10 months and over 230 something thousand, which is a fantastic number. It, it actually could be much more if I would limit the kind of videos that I do and keep it to just like food videos, food videos with the heat and the dessert and the, but it's food. And then, so what we're doing is we split the two channels and this was what was recommended to me. And, and I'm going to try it. We're going to see how it goes. So the old Ryback TV is now Feed Me More TV because that's all going to be based around the food and entertainment on that. The new Ryback TV is a channel and these shows now, this will be the first one uh, the, on the first podcast for conversation with the big guy Ryback. The wrestling is going to be up on Monday on the new Ryback TV. So please subscribe to both channels. Ryback TV now though on YouTube is going to be the Shooting Blanks Wrestling Report in conversation with the big guy Ryback in the wrestling report clips. And that is it. And that is going to be, we're going to grow that audience with people that specifically wants to watch that content. Feed me more TV which is what all of us have been watching, that is my main channel, is now going to be the food, like I said. So, and the podcast and all that will be off of it. And uh, I think that's really, really gonna help simplify things and, and help people find what they're looking for. And eventually I'm hoping we could take all of the podcast stuff and move it to the new channel and then separate it for everybody. And I think that's gonna be the best thing going forward with that. And, uh, and I think it, it's gonna, 
um, I'm always big to keeping an open mind and in trying different things. And it'd be easy to say, no, I want to keep it all on one channel, but clearly that is not working like it was. And, and that's based off the algorithm and how YouTube works. So from the professionals giving me reading the analytics and giving me this data, and now I can make an educated decision. Okay, well, let's do this and let's do that. And let's go ahead and we'll see how it goes. So for everybody watching, thank you guys. Please subscribe to both channels now, Ryback TV and Feed Me More TV as we continue uh, to move forward. We got Real Good Foods will be back with us. Everyone, a lot of people stopped advertising for a few months actually, which I'm actually, I was, and found out some more information like with Feed Me More Nutrition. What a blessing that I, in, with everything, because I even noticed though the return on ad spend is down the last few months, but it's still good. Um, and where I've gone heavier in advertising, but a lot of people pulled their advertising just all together because they were unsure of what was going on with everything. I took a little bit different approach. It, it paid off luckily with everything, but we'll have real good food to be back next month on all that. Guys, Feed Me More Nutrition available on feedmemore.com and Amazon. Be more. That is the slogan that is uh, moving forward. I've, uh, and I read different marketing books and I was, I was sitting and, and reading another one the other day and uh, it just hit me because it talks about, um, you know, like Nike's just do it and how you want to elicit an emotional response um, from your customers. And I just stopped reading and I just said to myself, I, I, I don't know, it was, it was one of those moments I said, why did I get into this? Why, what was for me, like, what, why did I become so passionate about supplements at such a young age? And I just, I just asked myself the right question, I feel, and I sat there and I said, because I wanted to be more. And I just said, that's it. Be more. Feed me more nutrition. Be more. We all want to be more. That was my whole drive, and it is my drive, of creating supplements that can help benefit me, help benefit people, now having my supplement line, to being more to being better, to being healthier, be more. And uh, so that is um, moving forward, the, the, the slogan, because that's why I created the brand. That's why I created the brand for myself when I was 20 something years old. And uh, it was just one of those moments. It was really powerful. I go, fuck. It was like, I just never had asked myself the right question, but that book, got me to ask myself the right questions. So, but uh, with all new customers, guys, we're now doing a sale for all new customers. We've upped it for first time buyers. You can actually uh, save 25% on Feed Me More Nutrition on feedmemore.com with discount code SAVE25 at checkout for all first time buyers. We want you to be customers of Feed Me More Nutrition. And uh, we got the, the uh, Hope Spot mood and stress support coming out here, which is uh, going to be arriving at the Fulfillment Center this week. And uh, we got the Shell Shock Extreme Fat Burner on pre-order. That is, that is arriving very, very soon. That is being done next. And uh, the Peanut Butter Pieces Protein is going to be late July. And uh, we have all that in. And uh, it is, I can't thank you guys enough for all the love and support with all of this. Uh, I'm constantly in communication with customer service with fulfillment. And uh, I'm going to be making another trip out there here very soon uh, to just kind of go over everything. We're, they're, they're growing rapidly with me. So it's, it's, it's kind of sometimes with different situations and, um, and getting policies put in place based off of uh, feedback and information we're getting. Um, but I do need to say, guys, I, please be patient with shipping. That is not a, a reflection of Feed Me More Nutrition or anything. USPS, FedEx, UPS, guys, we are in the middle of a pandemic or what they are calling a pandemic for the last few months at least. There were severe delays that I've experienced myself from many companies. I have packages. I have an international package that's over two months late. It's, they're just holding on to things. Domestic packages. I had my own order that took three weeks to come in that shipped out within 24 hours. And it's unfortunate. And I've called and I've been on the phone with USPS for 90 minutes trying to get answers. They don't have them. 
and it's just there's every there's just delays and everyone's unhappy and you can't compare Amazon guys who has their own shipping service with their own company to everything else so do not let that well Amazon ships overnight and guys that's a whole different animal and even they have had delays on different things where things aren't coming nearly as quickly as they were and uh, so just please be patient we give you guys great discounts that aren't that are not available on Amazon and different things so uh, please be patient hopefully once this virus is over shipping was always very efficient and very uh, speedy b before all this so they get the orders out in a very timely manner and uh, just ask that you guys continue to be patient and emailing them and bitching and complaining about shipping times is not something you can call USPS and I called them because I wanted to know firsthand and, and they don't have answers other than there's massive delays right now so that's what the situation is with all of that <clears throat> all right guys I do want to go ahead and uh, my thought of the week this week is taking a look look here uh, I put out a tweet it just came to me as I was just sitting sipping on some coffee earlier and uh, because I, I oftentimes see a lot of people want, or, or a lot of people like to give advice wrong a lot of people want to give advice and there's nothing wrong with that but something that just popped in my head is there was a, never let a zero tell you how to be a 10 they're not the one. Never let a zero tell you how to be a 10. They're not the one. And uh, I go, I just, I, I put that out as I often do with my thoughts on Twitter and uh, for motivation. And it was just because you have to be very careful of who you take guidance from and who you let give you guidance. There's times I delete messages or things where people try, I don't even read it. Because it, I already, I, I know the source and it's not, I know it's not going to be beneficial to me based off of what I, I know at the time and, and then where I'm going in different things. And it's just something I've learned and I've, I've made the mistake of in the past where I've had to cut ties in, with people, not because they're, they're like pieces of shit or anything like that, but because they're not beneficial for me in the very negative energy and they haven't figured a lot out on their own. So why would i let someone who hasn't ever figured anything out try to tell me how to keep figuring it out so it's you have to be very careful and it's not neglecting advice i'm very open to advice it's but know your source i think that's you know you have a business i was let's just use my supplement business just for for personal my personal reference here do you think i'm gonna if i have two companies two different people there's person a and person b and person a is a um very successful supplement business owner um multi 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 millionaire uh and and supplement or uh, company b uh the guy went out went under after a year being in business and uh he no longer is is involved in the supplement industry um and I have my company and I'm in a position I want some advice on something. Am I more prone to listen to supplement company A or supplement company B? That's where I'm kind of getting at with this. And not to say that that person's a bad person or anything, but, but they didn't figure it out. So why would I want them to give me advice? And not to say that they can't give me great advice because they very well may. But just as a rule, and I've seen this over time, never let a zero tell you how to be a 10. They're not the one. And that's my thought of the week this week. All right, guys, for all fan mail, I got a ton of fan mail. Thank you, guys. We got to do a fan mail Friday video. There's, I think there's over 100 different pieces of fan mail that came in. It is, I'm blown away. And I thank you, guys, four years off TV and, and the, it means the world to me. Um, but P.O. Box 752740, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89136. If you have any hot sauces, guys, you want me to try, if you're a company, a hot sauce company, you got some hot challenges or food items you want me to try for Ryback TV, I'm sorry for feeding me more TV. Stupid. 
please send it to the P.O. Box 752740, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89136. Personal videos, happy birthdays, videos of inspiration for your friends, anything you want, cameo.com slash the big guy Ryback. We got all t-shirts, work hard and be nice to people. It's the shirt of the day. Teespring, uh, go to the teespring.com. We are the Feed Me More store on Teespring. And uh, it's also on there on the Feed Me More TV. You can see the store uh, front on YouTube as well. Guys, my book, Wake Up, It's Feeding Time, available on Amazon. And follow me on social media. I'm the big guy, Ryback22. Feed me more nutrition conversation with the big guy, Ryback TV on Instagram. Ryback, Ryback on Twitter, not Ryback22. Ryback on Twitter. Feed me more nutrition on Facebook, Ryback247 on Snapchat. And the big guy, Ryback22 on TikTok. Thank you guys very much for listening. You've just listened to another episode of Conversation with the big guy, Ryback. Feed me more yo thank you guys for watching ryback tv if you could check out my shooting blanks wrestling report every monday on all podcast platforms conversation with the big guy ryback every thursday morning on all podcast platforms and feed me more nutrition my personal supplement line available on feedmemore.com and amazon save 10 percent with discount code youtube 10 and save stupid why couldn't you almost had it I almost had the whole video done in one take. Ah, new customers, you can save 20% with discount code NEWCUSTOMER on feedmemore.com. Get hungry, stay hungry, feed me more.